Global sea temperatures have never been warmer than they are now, and this brought a more severe east coast low to our state in April. Three people died at Dungog when a frightening flash fire flood cascaded through the pensioner units at 5 a.m. one morning. Half of Winder Whopper Access Road at Hawk's Nest was washed away, leaving a row of million dollar houses looking very vulnerable. Oh. The South Australia bushfires reached a catastrophic level, a new category introduced after the devastating 2009 Victorian bushfires. As the Climate Council reported last week, bushfires are becoming more intense, more frequent, lasting longer and covering a larger area. The El Nino drought made the Indonesian forest and peat fire burn-off season the worst on record releasing a monster one billion tonnes of carbon into the atmosphere in just six weeks, double Australia's carbon emissions. To our north, a humanitarian disaster is unfolding, a potential one, as residents of Papua New Guinea come south to the Torres Strait Islands in search of fresh water and food because of the El Nino drought that's displacing them. And what is the Australian government doing about this? You must have read the speech. <laughs> Not one Australian company, no coal fire power station, no oaken cup mine, no factory, no vehicle fleet will have to reduce their emissions as a result of the failed policies Malcolm Turnbull and Greg Hunt are taking to Paris. <laughs> So far, they have spent 1.2 billion of taxpayers' money, mostly paying farmers not to cut down trees or plant trees. Many of the projects are paying companies that are already in business to go on doing what they are doing. Shame. But get this, one of those projects is paying Wes farmers to change the light bulbs in coal supermarkets. Shame. It's a farce and a con, and it's Australia's official climate reduction policy. The state government has no policies to reduce large-scale emissions and very weak renewable energy policies. Both levels of government are desperate to open new coal mines and, and expand existing mines. So it's up to local government that we look for solutions. And while we're doing that, we might look for Peter Bessling, the mayor. Of... Yeah, he's got a moustache. That, that's what, that's what proved it. He's got a